Welcome back to another Steam free to play review. Today we have BU. Hindsight warning, the narrator in this game does cuss. So if you're a kid that's not allowed to watch cussing, close the video. Close it! <laughs> Which is a visual novel type game that was made by somebody named Lewis. According to the game. I don't know if that's actually who made it, but that's who the game refers to as the creator. I also added the soundtrack to the game so you'd have something to listen to in the meantime. And Lewis goes on to tell you that like his spelling mistakes in this game are not because he's bad at typing or bad at spelling, but because they're happy little accidents. As somebody that can barely like when I'm trying to read this stuff I make mistakes, I can't blame him. And he seems to like do pretty well. Like the story is really cognizant still, which is good, unlike some like Robotherium, which has really bad errors that makes it hard to read, hard to get immersed into the game. The story's not that good in the first place, and three it always ends the same. This is a big step up from that. It seems to start with like three questions that I pretty much ask you after he tells you why his favorite color is green. My favorite color is also green, so he starts off on like a good foot. Just from the get-go, dude's already starting strong by describing why green is so awesome. Even though there's many reasons why green is like the best color ever. So the question, it, the questions that he starts to ask you, kind of like are Monty Python questions, where he's like, "What is your quest? What is your favorite color?" <laughs> Stuff like that. So, and then the dialogue changes pretty significantly for each answer choice that you pick which is good like the story is pretty adapting to what your decisions are this is like a choose your own adventure kind of game even though there's certain parts of the game that are static like there's certain events that are going to happen every time it still it still keeps you interested enough that you should want to play the game multiple times it's a really short game though I think if you like speed you like you'd read at a decent speed unlike myself you could probably get through the game in like five minutes and then I think there's only like I could only get four innings so there's probably five because I'm not determined enough to get them all but they're all pretty interesting too none of them's bad I'm not gonna spoil them in this but I'm gonna also include like a playthrough video of like the full playthrough I did through this game which I'm gonna kind of experiment with it's gonna have like live audio and like kind of show you what I was thinking before I actually created the view after the fact. So this is your 12th birth, 12th birthday, and after you get asked what your what you want for your birthday, which is this pet thing, and this is the only answer choice I think that actually has four options, because nothing is an option. And it's a pretty good option. I like the dialogue that goes along with it. This game does something really well that keeps the story pretty entertaining. Is that Lewis? seems to separate himself from the narrator, Lewis the creator of the game, even though I would assume he made the narrator since he created this game. He keeps them separate and they break the fourth wall together and <laughs> it's pretty entertaining. I like the little story mechanism that that creates between the narrator talking crap about Lewis and Lewis being the one that actually made this game. So the story it's basically you going into a fantasy world in your 12th birthday. It even alludes to like Alice in Wonderland. And I really love some of the aspects of the story. Some of the choices are really good. But it's not a. It doesn't feel like a really complete game to me, anyways. Because you only have so many options of what you can do. And it's not some grand, ep grandiose story. But for a, a. It seems like a pretty quick put together game with like a really decent story I enjoyed it for what it was the drawings are kind of like <laughs> not that great but I love that cat that cat is living his best life looking all deformed and whatnot it's a lot better than I could do but for a visual novel I would expect something to have like decent graphics granted I've I'm kind of spoiled on visual novels because I've only played one really good one and then one really bad one so Robothorium has a little bit better graphics but does everything else worse but Doki Doki Literature Club is by far the best visual novel I play that just puts the scale way up here so the creator said you could pick out little spelling mistakes as like a side quest kind of thing it'd be kind of cool if you like you could interact with the spelling mistakes and it ended up being an achievement or like something like an ultimate ending happens when you find the all the spelling mistakes in the game that'd be kind of interesting it'd give you a little bit of gameplay to go with it 
He also po pokes fun at the fact that this is a like choose your own adventure choices kind of game. And he's like, oh, I gotta give you choices, don't I? So it kind of thinks like the choices, he kind of makes it seem like the choices were kind of like an afterthought and it was more of him just giving you like a story that you can watch. It's pretty relaxing. It's a pretty relaxing game. There's no sound, so I had to add my own. There was sound at one part in the game, but it doesn't last throughout the whole game, which is really weird. But other than that, it was for a very small scale game. I think this is like Lewis is the only one I think that I saw working on this game from the only one mentioned working on it. There's two people that had a favorable mention at the end who I don't know who they are. I'll try to include that at the end of the video. But I don't know if they helped to make the game or Lewis did it all himself, the drawings and everything. So, if Lewis made it by himself. Good job, Lewis. Proud of you, bro. <laughs> this is a good... This is a pretty good game. Um, definitely one of the better stories I've ran into so far. I wouldn't say it's as good as... Uh, what was that game I just played? Oh, man. The Ambrose Chronicles. I don't know if it's as good as that story. That story is probably a little bit better. I like the interactions a lot more. And it seemed a little bit more put together. But going into this, I didn't really expect much from the drawings and the how it was pretty much set up before I downloaded it, like on the preview page. But it was actually a relatively surprising game. I'd recommend you playing it if you just want a little experience. I don't think it's a waste of time at all. You'll you'll probably enjoy yourself and you'll get to see a bunch of different endings. They do make like a lot of references to books, movies. And stuff like that in the game, like uh, they reference The Little Mermaid, H.P. Lovecraft, Narnia, a lot of different form of medias. And he cusses a lot. I should have warned you about that before I got to this scene, but he does cuss a lot. So if you <laughs> you don't like that kind of thing, might not want to play this game. If you're like a kid or something, don't play this game. I'm gonna have to put an edit at the beginning of the video telling mature language. <laughs> I forgot about that while I was playing it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he does cuss a lot in the game. Definitely depending on some answer choices. And he may, he even pokes fun of it at one point too. He's like, the narrator's like, Lewis, I don't care if your game has to get a more mature rating. I'm all cuss if I want to cuss, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I'm trying not to cuss myself. I'm like trying to get better about that. So <laughs> it kind of took me off, took me by surprise when I started playing the game. Because it kind of looks really kids-like. And this dude looks like, I figured it out while I was playing it, but the dude looks like, the green guy from Lilo and Stitch. That's who this guy reminds me of. And it tries to like... When the big bad shows up to like fight you or whatnot. And it tries to like make you feel bad. That you leave it. Or if you run away. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't feel bad. That <laughs> I don't care about that thing from Lilo and Stitch. I'm trying to live. Like the monster looks like some augmented Resident Evil form of your cat. From your room. But... Yeah, if you like fourth wall breaking things in a story that kind of... <laughs> it's kind of original and in, 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 uh, entertaining, you'll probably like this game. I give this game a 4.5 out of... Uh, did I give it a 4.5 out of 10? What did I give this game? Wait a second. Uh, I, I thought about this game for a long time before I like actually rated it because I was stuck between a 4 and a 5. Because it's, it's really simplistic. But at the same time, I think it's a worthwhile experience. I think I gave it a 5 for the sheer fact that I thought this game was worth the experience. Like, it, I felt like for the amount of time I put into it, I got a decent amount of enjoyment out of it. Still a short game, and it's not, like, super amazing or anything, but I still think it was worth the experience of downloading it. I need to do a video where I, like, talk about my grading criteria and what gets to what score. But as always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Bye! Lame. Oh, is that the end? Donating to your favorite. Oh, that's nice, Lewis. Good job, man.